Hi, my name is Derek and you're watching the Bayside Games Dev Blog Tutorial where we're creating a particle manager. So in our previous tutorial we were just about to specify the vertices for each quad that comprises our particle. So the way we do this is very simple. First of all we create a template containing something that looks very similar, sort of a basic uh, one unit on each side quad. So this, this quad is literally 1.0 measurements in, on each side. What we're going to do is we're going to scale this and transform it into, and translate it to be specific, we're going to translate it into the uh, space that we want it to be in. So think of this as sort of a unit square. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to take these and have a closer look at the particle. So each particle has a position. This is a position relative to the container. So if you go back to the container, these verts are actually going to be sitting in a slightly strange place. Um, they're going to be from 1 to minus 1, so they're centered around the, look, the center of the container. So all that we need to do is first scale and then translate them. So what we're going to do in order to do that is quite simple. I'm going to get rid of that code. That code is actually not right. So the stream vertices, first of all, need to be initialized. So these have an x, y, and z. So what we can actually do is we can just assign them from the quadverts. So that's simple enough. And in fact, we can use a little loop for that. And an even faster way to do this would be to use memcopy, but we can use the loop for now. Okay. Okay, so for each of these verts, what we want to do is first scale it. So, this is for the x and the y. So, the x is equal to the particle. So, the particle comes from our particles list, which is an m particles. And the particles list is indexed using this loop index over here, i. And we're going to use that one size. So we do that for the x and the y. That's easy enough. So that scales it. So that gives it a size. Now we need to translate it into the correct position. And that's also quite straightforward. All we do is we add our particles position to the current vertex. So this is actually quite a complex transformation we're doing here. We start out with this thing, it's centered around the origin, it's one unit in size, so you can think of it as a normalized square. And then we scale that normalized square according to the size of our particle. So let's say our particle is 5.0 units in size. Um, we, oh, actually that's wrong, it should be multiply. And we're going to run into a problem here because m size is fixed. Um, but this, this is maybe not fixed, so we're, we'll actually need to check that. But anyway, so the size is multiplied against the, is multiplied against the x and the y. That scales it. Last but not least, we add the position. So the position can be positive or negative, um, and that will translate it for us into the right coordinate space. So that's actually quite straightforward. Um, what we just need to check is the types of these x and y's. So the stream vertices are in x vec 3 and the x and y are in 16s, so that's okay. But they're fixed point numbers, so we need to treat them a little bit differently because the size is also fixed. So what we do is we use IW fixed multiply. So this is a fixed number here. And the particle size. So now you're beginning to see why I decided to use the fixed thing here. Because we're actually going to use size directly in dealing with these relative things. So it makes a lot of sense to keep the size as an IW fixed, so we don't have to do a lot of float to fixed conversions. And we're just going to do the same for the X and the Y. So now we need to look a little bit at IW fixed mole. Okay. So now we're starting to actually get to a place where we need to create a new variable. So I'm going to create a variable called um, current vert. 
because I don't want to be doing this dereference, this array index operation every time, and it actually makes the code look really messy. But if we do it this way, we're just dereferencing something very simple, and the code look already is beginning to look a lot simpler. Okay, yeah, no, that's a whole lot better. Convert.x. So you can see how much easier and simpler that makes the code to read. So we'll go through it again. Um, we initialize the current vert with our template, which is a normalized square. We scale it using fixed point maths, which is why we use this. And then we translate it once again using fixed point maths. The types here are the same, spec, spec. And that'll put it into the right space for us. So that's what, that was pretty easy. Um, now we've already dealt with the colors. Last but not least, we have to have indices. Um, all primitives are rendered, or pretty much everything is rendered using these. And we can actually do this inside this uh, loop for the vertices, because uh, vertices and these numbers are uh, vertices are intimately related to indices. Um, each index specifies a new vertex. Now um, we can't do triangle stripping or anything, so we're just really literally going to go with the simplest approach. Um, all we need to do for the stream is to just give it zero, one, two, three. So you know consecutive indexes, and that can be defined by the current vert so that's i stream we should probably yeah you know, well we're going to use i stream for other things than just verts otherwise i would have called it i current vertex or something but for now we can just use i stream just like that that's easy enough and we need to increment i stream every time as well but actually we can't do that here that, that, that would be wrong um, because iStream might be used for something else later on. So if we do it inside this loop, that's just not going to work. So what we do now is we just use iStream plus iVert. And that will give us the right index. So you see that was already used up here actually. So that's the index of the current vertex. And we're going to be initializing these. So we need to have a closer look at mstream indices because this is a number of indices. It's an array. But luckily, um, because our structure is so simple, you know, each index has a vert associated with it. So we can just use the same indexing system. So the stream indices, now I'm 100% sure I'm getting a compiler error here. Oh, of course, the stream indices is const. So I made a mistake there. I made it too const. <laughs> the, you can't actually change these. We need to make the pointer constant, not the uh, actual data that it points to. So that should fix that. Okay, that's a bit better. We got rid of that. So this will initialize our vertices, um, and this little piece of code is going to happen for every single vertex. I mean, for every single particle. Um, it's not as expensive as it looks, even though it seems to be in a really, really tight loop. Um, it's pretty simple, and we're just using integer maths here, so that's pretty fast too. So this is the basics of our uh, particle update loop and generating these lists that we're going to be sending off to the GPU. Uh, one thing that we do need to bear in mind, though, is that the number of particles is actually a value that specifies, you know, it's a contiguous list. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, we have a, two integers. We have a max num particles and num particles. And what we're actually going to do in a future tutorial, not this tutorial, is to make sure that the list of particles is always contiguous. So that'll actually make this little piece of code slightly simpler because we can assume that that list is contiguous. So we can actually get rid of I stream. And we can just use I because we know that it's going to be contiguous. This is something I just realized now. So that actually makes our code a lot simpler. Because we can just use I, we're assuming that each of these is fine. But we need to bear in mind that these stream indices and the vertices are slightly different. Um, they're four times the size of the list of particles. So for each particle, there's four of these elements. So what that means is we actually need to do a slightly different piece of maths. So the stream index is different to the index into the list of particles. It's actually equal to the, the current particle index times four plus this i vert. So we're gonna use that stream index instead. The stream index is used because the lists are different size, but they, you know, they're very closely related. So this is sort of a, a mapping from the one lists uh, in numbering system into the other numbering system. 
So let's review. The particle container update goes through each particle that is alive. Um, it gives it a color. Um, it takes a, a, a sort of a square, a little square around the origin and it translates and scales it into the right coordinate space for that particular particle. And then it assigns and it copies these sort of transform scale values into these relative relevant streams. Uh, the vertex stream, the index stream gets given the little index of that vert. It's just a very simple zero, one, two, three, four numbering system. We're not doing any fancy stripping or anything with these verts. And then the color gets assigned in the color stream. And that's all good. Uh, but I've just noticed that we actually need to have a more sophisticated stream index here because the colors are one color per vertex. So these actually need to be inside this loop and we need to use the stream index. So that's fine. So that'll uh, generate these streams for us uh, once per frame. Uh, we'll have a stream and it will have exactly i, you know, i times 4, which is the number of particles times 4 uh, verts, colors, and indices in it. So we can now use this because update is always called before render in our loop and then the submit gets called. We can use these. So we don't even need num particles anymore. All we need to do now is just submit these to the rasterizer. So this is where the rubber hits the road. Um, this is the final part of the tutor tutorial for, the, for now. Um, hopefully this will do something, but we're actually gonna have to hook it up too. So that will be another tutorial. But this is uh, the, probably the most interesting part of the tutorial. Um, we need to, first of all, figure out how we're gonna render this thing. So the very first thing we need to do is to remember that we're in view space for all of our particles for simplicity. Um, the very important thing about rend rendering these things is that we're going to use the IWGX quad list uh, primitive type. And in order to do that, we have to set a view space origin, which happens to be the same as this particle container's position, as we discussed earlier. So that's really easy to do. Um, we just have to create that. So we're going to make a new vector. We're going to call it a view space location. And that can just be an SVEC3 because we're not using huge huge numbers here and we're actually going to just um, create a, an empty one for now and I'll show you the function first so it's called IWGX set view space org or origin and it takes let me just get rid of that it actually takes a vec3 so I'm quite happy to give that a vec3 and not a short vector because this is a world space origin so it could be fairly big and what we're going to do is we're going to use um, the world view matrix, which you can just fetch by getting IWG get world view matrix. And we're going to use that matrix to transform the position of this particle system into view space. So the position of this container, which is mpos, that's in world space. We need to transform that into view space to use it as the origin. And that's very straightforward. Just do that. So transform vec transforms our position by the worldview matrix. Very easy. And it gives us a view space location. We can turn that into a const. It's never going to change again. And then all we do is we just use that little vector. Very easy. Um, I'm not 100% sure why this takes a pointer instead of just a reference or a copy, but it's not really a big deal. Okay. That will set up the uh, matrix and geometry aspect of things in the transformation. The next thing we need to do is to actually turn on emissive lighting because I actually turn it off right now. This is just a safety thing because I actually turn it off elsewhere. We may be able to get rid of this in the later tutorial once we start doing real lighting. Okay, and now um, we can set up the streams. So we do IWX set vert stream. First of all, we need vertex stream. We can do these in any order we like because it only really matters once we submit. And now we use the vertices, which is already found for us, which is nice. And we need the number of vertices, which is the number of particles times four. And we do the same for the other streams. So now we set up the color stream, same deal. We set the, um, Actually, we, we've done all the streams now, so we don't really need to do anything more than that. Uh, but what we do need to do is to set the normal stream to null, because we may already have set a normal stream and also a UV stream. We'll use these later on. And we submit. And that's it. Thanks for watching.